Nine-term State Representative Andy Fleischman has landed a new job. After a nationwide search, he has been chosen to lead Nutmeg Big Brothers Big Sisters. We all know it for its famous mentoring program, Connecting At-Risk Children with Adults. He's here now to talk about his new role and how it fits in with his agenda at the Capitol. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So congratulations on the new job. Um, and tell me, I mean, is there something more that, that Big Brothers Big Sisters needs to be doing? I mean, do you have like a new focus or a new mission or is it just really expanding what we know it to do already? Well, uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters uh, across America and in Connecticut does an incredible job not only of matching the right adults to the right children in need, but also to tracking the results. And so that's already going on. That, that's that been happening long before I was lucky enough to be uh, chosen to be the new president and CEO. But there are so many children with need. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my view, we're not serving enough of them. So m one of my central goals is really to expand the number of children served. Nutmeg Big Brothers Big Sisters co covers 111 municipalities in Connecticut. So that's m most of Connecticut, except for southeastern and southwestern Connecticut that mm -hmm. have their own chapters. Um, I feel like there are more children in virtually every community whom we could be helping, and I'm going to do my best to help the organization get there. So what's the main thing that's going to change that, getting more volunteers? Is that, is that it? Well, uh, so the, the rocket fuel for the organization is funding and volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, funding because we don't just go ahead and uh, take someone and say, here, here's a child, go play with them. We give them all sorts of support. It's match support, we call it, um, so that they understand better what's going on in the dynamics so they have someone to give them advice if there are things that are unexpected that arise, um, so that they have good ideas of activities to do that will help them develop a bond with the child. Um, so so it's an ongoing relationship that develops between the adult mentor and the child, and that's why it's so powerful. Right. Oftentimes you're talking about, uh, say, a, a boy who has no father, uh, a girl who's the 10th of 11 children who are living in poverty, um, you know, someone whose parents are incarcerated, all sorts of situations where there's a lack of, of, of a parental-type mm -hmm. role model or, or the type of adult attention and support that helped you and me and a lot of lucky people know that it was important to read, it was important important to do your homework. It was important to try and graduate high school and go to college. Some children don't realize that those vistas are open to them until they get matched with the right big brother or big sister. So I think, you know, I think pretty much everyone has heard about the program, but how, I mean, how um, intensive is the getting matched up and um, how much of a commitment is it? Um, so in terms of how intensive the process is, it depends on which angle you're looking at. For our specialists who are meeting the volunteers and meeting the children, you know, they work really hard to try and make sure that they have the right child and the right adult match together. Um, but for the person who volunteers, it's pretty easy. I mean, if you're a good person who wants to help children um, and you don't have any sort of a criminal record that's going to cause problems and red flags, um, you know, we would love to have you uh, get involved with our program. And uh, in terms of the commitment, it's six to ten hours a month. Typically, uh, the big brothers or big sisters make that three or four visits per month mm -hmm. uh, where they're, you know, doing things with the child that, that, you know, often would happen between a parent and a child. And these are relationships that last for years or... I mean, are you paired up for a year or a specific time period? So we seek uh, a minimum of a one-year commitment because, you know, in the life of a child, one year is something substantial. And so we ask for that, but most matches go far longer. The average match is uh, on the order of three years. But then, you know, most of the people on our board have been big brothers or big sisters, and they talk to me about their littles, as they call them, who are now 27, 29, 33. I mean, these are lifetime bonds that often form. You know, and one other thing that um, you sent me some background information that stuck out was that it's, an, it's not just inner city kids that we're talking about. I mean, this is, uh, as you mentioned, throughout 100 some some towns in Connecticut. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting. I've seen this both wearing my hat as uh, chairman of the Education Committee and now in this new role. There are pockets of need and poverty across this state. There are situations where there are children not getting uh, the kind of parental attention uh, or adult attention and supervision that they need and deserve, not getting the type of education they deserve in small rural communities, in suburbia, and in the cities. Yeah. So we serve a lot of children in Hartford, sure, but we serve children in lots of small towns where um, it's less well known that there's a need. You um, have long, of course, been involved in education legislation. Governor Malloy has said that he wants the next uh, session to be an education agenda. I mean, what, is that, what does that mean to you? 
Well, well what you, would you like it to mean? Uh, you know, there are so many things uh, that, that need to start changing for us to get better results, not just for the children who are on the downside of the achievement gap, but also for our best performing children who are being outperformed by kids who are in Singapore or Helsinki or other, mm-hmm. uh, other places in the world that have really focused in on their math education, their reading, their scientific reasoning. So um, what I'm hoping is uh, a number of steps that involve uh, focusing on getting excellent teachers who get the kind of professional support they deserve, excellent school leaders, um, and benchmarking that relates not just to national trends, but international trends. Mm -hmm. There's something called the PISA exam that uh, involves um, tests of reasoning and and scientific skill that's applied across the world. And a lot of uh, Americans have avoided having their school kids take the PISA test because they're worried about how it will turn out. We can't be afraid of that. If that test shows that our kids aren't doing well, we need to apply that test to a lot of kids and then start ratcheting up what we're doing to improve the results. And I think our new uh, nominee for Commissioner of Education feels that way. Yeah, um, let's talk about him because you've, you've had a chance to meet him. Um, and tell us uh, what your impression was and, of him. My sense is he is the right man for the moment. Um, you know, this is a big challenge that lies before us, and it requires leadership. Our governor has said he's going to lead. He's called 2012 the year of education mm-hmm. for him personally. And now he's picked someone who has a demonstrated track record of taking on big challenges and overcoming them. He's not scared of a big challenge. Right. He's it's drawn Stephen to Pryor, it. by the way. We, yeah. we didn't say his name. Stephen Pryor. And he has a, quite a, a very bio. Uh, he worked uh, in the redeveloping um, lower Manhattan after 9-11. Um, and, and, and you think those sorts of experiences are going to help him here? Well, first of all, his, his roots are in education. Yeah. And when he was still in law school, he founded the Amistad Academy, which is one of the top performing urban public schools in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was while he was in law school. And then he got involved with the DiStefano administration doing all sorts of good redevelopment efforts in New Haven. Then he went to become executive director of Breakthrough, which was a nonprofit in, I think, Brooklyn to help assist public schools. It was a nonprofit helping the public schools. And he was trying to improve their teacher selection and their selection of school leaders. And he helped turnaround schools uh, in New York City, and then he happened to live near Ground Zero. And when 9-11 happened, he jumped in with reconstruction efforts, and soon he was the president of Lower Manhattan's reconstruction. And his most recent job, Cory Booker, pulled him away from the city to be his deputy mayor in charge wow. of economic development. So he's a star, in yeah. my view. He, he's, he's got not only the smarts, but the interpersonal skills. He really wants to collaborate with all the stakeholders to make things happen. All right. Well, I know you'll be working with him uh, closely if, you know, if it goes through and as, as education uh, chair of the Education Commission um, committee that you are. And we appreciate you taking the time here. And we wish you good luck on your new job, too. Thank you. Well, I appreciate your, your having us and, 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 and focusing attention on these at-risk children who really could use this kind of attention. For people who are out there, it's right. really easy. You just, you know, go to Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, Nutmeg Big Brothers, Big Sisters if you're in this area. And you can sign up to be a volunteer and, and be matched within, you know, a few weeks. All right. Very easy. Thanks a lot, Representative Fleischman. Thank you. Up next, the trial of Joshua Kamazajewski starts tomorrow. We take a look at what to expect and and why in this and why in this second Cheshire home invasion trial